Hi, in this video, you're going to learn the laptop motherboard power sequence. Okay, so the power sequence is a mandatory thing that every technician should know. You know why? Because if you understand the power sequence, you can understand the working principle of any motherboard. This is the charge IC, as you can see. Okay, here we have the BQ24703. This is a charge IC. Here, this is MOSFETs. Okay, this samples means MOSFETs. This is also an, the part, the charge IC. Here we have, as you can see, the TPS51120. This is the power management IC for 3 volt and 5 volt always. Here we have two switches or MOSFETs. Okay, through this MOSFETs, we will get 5 volt and plus 3 volt. Okay, and 3 volt will be converted via this switch to 2.5 volt. Here we have TPS51124 that generate 1.8 volt and 1.5 volt. Here, as you can see, this is the VCCP power management IC. It generates plus VCCP for the processor and the chips. And here, this is the MAX8770, the power management IC for the CPU, as you can see. It generates the plus VCC card, okay? So, Let's begin with the adapter, as you can see. We have the adapter, the 19 volt will pass, as you can see, this symbol means the direction of 19 volt will go through this MOSFET, and then the MOSFET will be activated by a control signal from the power management IC, the charge IC. Okay, then the 19 volt will pass to the current sense resistor, as you can see. So, the current sales resistor, after that we will get the VBAT. Okay, this is the main voltage that will be distributed for the whole motherboard. The VBAT will distribute it to all circuits in the motherboard, as you can see. Okay? So, the VBAT is a main power for every motherboard. After receiving the VBAT and the enable, as you can see, this IC will generate the 3 volt and 5 volts power rail. Okay, 3 volt and 5 volt are a very important voltages in the motherboard. Okay, so 3 volt always and 5 volt always. And these two voltages, as you see, will be applied to two MOSFETs or switches in order to get, as you can see, plus 5 volt and plus 3 volt. This is a normal voltage, okay? Then the 3 volt, then the 3 volt, as you can see, will be implemented to another circuit, okay? As you can see, AM3446, and we will get 2.5 volt, okay? So this is for the 3 volt, 5 volt power circuit, of course, after receiving this enable signals. So also the VBAT will be applied to this circuit, TPS511, 124. Here also we have two enable signals, okay? And we will get 1.5 volts, okay? And 1.8 volts. The 1.8 volts will be applied directly to TPS51100. This is another IC. So the 1.8 volt with these two enable signals will be applied to this IC and we will get 0.9 volt for the RAM. This is a VTT power for the RAM. Okay? The RAM has two kinds of power, 1.8 volt and 0.9 volt. Of course, for DDR2 RAM. The main power, the VDT power, or the main power, and the 0.9 volt, or VTT, the half of the main power. So, the VBAT also will be applied to the next IC, as you can see, TPS51117. This is plus VCCP power management IC. Here also we have an enable signal, power OK. So, the enable signal with the plus VBAT will apply to the IC, and the IC will give plus VCCP to all chips, including the processor. The plus VBAT also will go directly to power management IC for the CPU MAX8770 or MAXIM8770. This is the CPU power management IC. 
Of course, here we have many enabled signals, many signals. This is the ID signals, okay? This is the ID signals. Based on the signals, about eight signals, the IC will know the specific voltage for the CPU, okay? Of course, here we have other signals, power OK, PSI, power management, as you can see. So, after receiving the power bat and the enable signals and the IDs here, the IC will generate the VCC core through two channels, a main channel and a slave channel, okay? So, we will get plus VCC core, as you can see. So, here, as you can see, we have batteries, okay? So, the battery need to be charged, okay? So, as you can see here, this is the charge IC, okay? As you can see, here we have the charge control from the East IO or Super IO. When this charge control arrives, here we have the EC, okay? The charge IC will generate is okay and also will generate this voltage. As you can see, this voltage will pass through two MOSFETs. The MOSFETs will be activated by the IC and then, as you can see, the battery will be charged. Okay? Now we're going to see all these ICs that we have seen in the schematic in a real motherboard. So we will begin with the BQ. We will begin with this IC, the charge IC BQ24703. So this is it. As you can see here, we have 24703. As you can see, this is the charge IC, as you can see. Okay, so this is the charge IC. So we will see right now the next IC, the TPS51120, the IC that is responsible for generating 3 volt and 5 volt. So let's see it in the motherboard. So as you can see here, we have TPS, as you can see, 51120. This is the IC that is responsible for generating 3 volt always and 5 volt always. Okay, as you can see. Now let's see the power management IC of 1.5 volt and 1.8 volt. This is TPS51124. Okay. So let's see also this IC TPS51100 that is responsible for generating 0.9 volt for the RAM. So we're going to see these two ICs. So 51124 and 51100. This is, as you can see here, to 51124 as you can see in the right and over here as you can see this is as you can see 51100 this is a power management IC that generate 0.9 volt for the VTT to power the RAM the random access memory so these two ICs always you will find it near to each other okay so now let's see the plus vccp power management ic the tps 51117 so the plus vccp will be applied to the processor and other chips in the motherboard so let's see it in the motherboard of course this ic should be near to the processor as you can see we have here the processor as you can see and we have here the ic we have 51117 as you can see. So this IC generate plus VCCP for the processor and for other chips like the PCH or GMCH. This is a fuse. So now again, we're gonna see the Max IT770. This is the CPU power management IC here. It gener generate plus VCC core through two channels. As you can see, this is two channels here. We have two inductors. Each inductor means a channel, okay? Two inductors. So right now, let's see the power management IC. As you can see in the back of the socket, of the processor, as you can see, this is the processor circuit, the back of the processor circuit here. We have the maximum, as you can see, near to the socket. Maximum 8770, as you can see, okay? This is a big IC. So this IC is responsible for generating the power 
the working power for the CPU, the PLUS VCC card. The CPU power management IC. So for this IC, as you can see here, always for the CPU, we have one channel or more. So this is the first channel here. Okay. And here we have the second channel. So I will show you the whole schematic or the whole circuit. So as you can see here, okay. So this is the power management IC. Okay. And here we have two channels. This is the first channel. We will get finally VCC call. And this is the second channel that will work to get the same voltage plus VCC call. Okay. So this is the master or the first channel. And this is the slave channel. The same working principle. Always we have the power management IC. We have the lower MOSFET that is connected to plus V battery, okay, 19 volt. Okay, so when this 19 volt is present here, we have here the gate. The control signal for this gate will comes from here. As you see, we have here drive high one, okay, drive low one, and we have the lower MOSFETs, we have here two MOSFETs, as you can see. So here we have a coil, L19, and we will get here the VCC core. Okay. For the second channel, the same working principle. We have here three voltages. We have coil, and we will get plus VCC core for the CPU. So let's see the pin configuration of the power management. I see for the CPU. So as you can see here, we have the VCC core. So plus VCC for the CPU is always 19 volts. Okay. So here, this is a very important signal. As you see, we have here seven signal or seven IDs. As you can see here, this is IDs. VID zero means voltage ID zero. One, two, three, six means seven IDs. So, what is the purpose of these IDs? These IDs is the tanks that determine the value of VCC core. So, each CPU has its own or its special IDs. For example, let's assume that we have a CPU Intel CPU. The working power for the Intel CPU, for example, is 1 volt. So the VCC core, for example, for Intel CPU is 1 volt. But for AMD processor, it needs 1.2 volt. So the power management IC can now the requirements of any CPU based on these IDs. So for every CPU, it has its special IDs, okay? Because the power of CPUs is not the same. There are CPUs that can be powered with 0.8 volts, others with 0.9 volts, others with 1.1, others with 1.2, etc. So this ID is the, the signals that determine the value or the required voltage or required VCCP core for each CPU. Okay? So for the CPU, as we have seen here, this is the first channel and here we have here the second channel. So for the CPU, generally, you will find two channels or more. Every CPU has two channels or more. You know what? Because the CPU is always in work, so it needs always the power so if it has just one channel the component of this channel can damage it easily so to release the heat 
of the processor and its components that compose its channels, the manufacturer use many channels for the CPU, about two channels or more. If the first channel work, the second channel is in rest, stop working. And if the second channel work, the first channel stop working. 